Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is Alex Bennett, and this is The Ramble, and we go until midnight tonight. Okay. Hey, guess who's there, huh? Huh? Guess who's there? Huh? Yeah, huh? Huh? Is that me? It's Lori, uh, it's Lori Thompson. <laughs> Hola. I have a pro- I'm getting ready. I have a problem. I got new coffee here. Uh oh! You mean a new kind? Well, I like, of new coffee? I like mocha mocha coffee, right? So yeah. I sent away for this stuff. And it's mocha coffee, it just as mocha, but it's got the sugar in it and it's got chocolate in it. And oh! I, I, and I don't like to take in sugar if I don't have to, but in this m- small amount, I don't mind it. But yesterday, I put artificial sweetener in there not knowing that it already had the sugar in it. And man, it was like I was eat, dr- drinking syrup, you know? Yeah, yeah. It was amazing. I mean, I like uh, the, the coffees. I like the one that Marjorie likes, your wife. Um, it's the Pike's Place. Yeah, you're, 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 Pikes, you're a Pike's person too, huh? Yeah. Yeah. She likes, uh, She well, she during COVID, she, she couldn't go to Starbucks, right? She did her Starbucks every morning, religiously, all right? Really? And what she did was the Pikes, you know. So I said, well, look, I can, I can order it for you for the, you know, the machine. And so, yeah. so I did. Uh, and uh, she tried it, and she you know, said, I don't want to try it. I said, it's okay. She's all right. Now that's all she uses. She doesn't go, oh, up, yeah. to, doesn't go up to Starbucks, you know. Well, because we had it. We were introduced to it at an airbnb when we came down to look for our house in florida yeah and and on it was just like this is the best coffee i've ever had at home and it's good it is it is you know i guess it's good i'm i'm just not a big starbucks fan and i yeah. like a double dose of coffee which this isn't but there's some that have double doses and i drink that stuff like crazy <laughs> <laughs> well, I, and I've gone the other way. I try to drink. I drink a cup in the morning of the caffeination, and then I switch to decaf, just because well, I don't. I, I, I don't drink in the, in the morning anymore. I only drink before <laughs> I do an interview here now. Yeah. Or when I do um, uh, the show at night, I t- I take a cup of it. Uh, but I don't. And then I only do. I only drink maybe a third of a cup or something. And then I, I yeah. take it and I put it in the refrigerator and warm it up the next day. Same here. Or I put it in a big uh, mason jar, the ones that I start but don't finish. That way they're already sweetened the way I like. And cold coffee, man, if you need to go somewhere like in the next 15 minutes, woo, it will knock your socks. I don't mind and cold you, coffee, do you? Pardon me? I don't mind cold coffee. Oh, not at all. Not yeah. at all. I mean, it's like getting it, iced coffee. What's the deal? Yeah. yeah. And, and I'm a big sucker for the Frappuccino-like drinks, you mm-hmm. know, which are, to me, taste a lot like a milkshake. Yeah, I, I drank those for a while, and I got sick of them, you know? Yeah. It's just... It's like it. To begin with, you if know? you get a Frappuccino in Starbucks, it's a whole different thing. It's not just this liquid. It's a thick frothy thing with stuff on top of it and so on you know mm-hmm. so yeah calling it a frappuccino i think diminishes the frappuccino they sell in the stores so yeah I, well I, and the other, other thing is mcdonald's has a really good frappe and it costs about half of what starbucks costs oh really but you have to be seen in mcdonald's see that's the that's the catch yeah i've been told that i, I and i i don't, I don't necessarily believe it that the Dunkin Donuts coffee is very good well they've got Ben Affleck pimping for him now so oh. I like him mm-hmm. so isn't that the funny thing the way we relate to advertising well if Ben Affleck ben advertising said it oh you know. gosh he was so good in all those movies you know, you know he mean, must I mean Jennifer Lopez will screw him so we should get uh <laughs> yeah um, you know because when they first when they just you know recently and they're married now 
I had forgotten that they ever went together. And it was so huge. Well, like, do you the remember Benefer? Yeah. And he went on Saturday Night Live saying, I have all these thousands of T-shirts left <laughs> that said Benefer on them. Either he that or it's Afla Ez. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Afla Ez. I like her, you know. And I just, there's something so uh, quintessentially, quintessentially, how do you say that? Quintessentially. quintessentially. You're, you're a radio announcer. You should be able to pronounce words for crying out loud. I'm having trouble these days, you know. But, well, you know, because I try to make new ones if I think they seem more applicable. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, she is just vivacious. She's unpretentious. I really like her. Yeah, she's and, okay. She's okay. Yeah. You know, I've never and, been turned off by her, okay? Yeah, you know, she's like, honest like, about I, You know, I'm, and I'm going to say this. How to say it? I hate Taylor Swift. She's just so in our face, man. So middle oh, just. I mean, you know, I don't care about her. Number one, I don't consider her sexy. You know, she's too tall for me. I don't like tall women. Uh, yeah. And uh, you know, there's got to be a reason why no relationship with her has ever lasted. And I yeah, don't think, I... and I don't think it like it's the guys like the songs she writes. You know. <laughs> I, I, well, I, I figure she just, here, here's my theory. And uh, you want my theory about Taylor Swift? I bet I know. She's lousy in the sack. See, I thought you were going to say she's a, a wiener tease, you know, oh, but. Uh, no, I, but uh, I, I think she, she doesn't give, if she just gave good head, they'd stick with her. A guy will yeah. never leave a woman who gives great head. Yeah, and they, it would open up a whole new legion of fans for her. Yeah, but the, yeah, she seems a little manufactured. But then, when you consider she's this one-woman show, if she is indeed, you know, the writer of all those songs and the, um, well, there's I have to, to hand her. I have to hand her her success because yeah. she has been a success for how long? It's been several decades now. Oh yeah, it's. I, I think this is her third decade. Yeah, and is she, it? and she's hotter now than she ever was. Yeah, because she had a slow build career plan, which always helps, mm -hmm. and that is what explains why she's hot now. Yeah, and she's prolific too. Like I say, if she's indeed writing the songs, but I'm then I'm, I'm sick of like I I never watch football, but some people were over here the other day and they wanted to see how the Kansas City what was it, the Kansas City Chiefs are yes. doing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we turn the game on, and I go, "Is this a game with Kelsey Grammer or whoever that is?" <laughs> Uh, yes, Travis Kelsey is Tra on Travis the Chiefs. Travis Kelsey, uh, and and he she said, uh, uh, yeah, and then all of a sudden they show her up in the booth, you know, yeah, and and the camera and you can tell it they've got it on extreme telephoto because they're getting up there, and she's looking up at the monitor, and she says, looks at the camera and mouths, get the fuck out of my face. Or something like that. that. Something like that. Oh yeah. my god! I mean, that's what she mouthed, and yeah. she, she was she was getting tired of it herself. You know, I'm just I here to see the game. Please don't exploit me. Yeah, you because know. it's his time. It's his time, and yeah. that's admirable of her uh, that she's uh, not trying to steal his spotlight. Yeah. On the other hand, it's what she signed up for. Okay. Yeah. So she can't complain. Yeah. You know, any of these people who complain about, oh, the press is in my face. Yeah, well, when they're not in your face anymore, that's when you should worry. You know? Right. You'll you'll start missing it then. Yeah. And, yeah, I, it made me realize the pressure that is on you. Relationships are tough enough already. But, I mean, when you have that intense media scrutiny, mm -hmm. it would, I can see where it would just freak a couple out. Because there's the rumor and innuendo on which these TMZ sites absolutely thrive. That's their bread and butter. And uh, if there's no scandal, and both of them seem to be pretty, t uh, Kelsey and you know and Taylor seem to be pretty down to earth people. Um, they're not real prone to scandal. And so maybe theirs will work. I don't know. Well, but it I mean, she, she's not the only people who are prone to scandal are people who are already married. Oh, you know, if you don't yeah. get married, there's no chance of scandal. 
Yeah, that's true. Well, if you were yeah. going out with this woman and you're going out with this other one who may wind up being your wife, well, it doesn't matter as much. You yeah. Know, who's this exactly. new woman? Is he going to dump her for, you know, but when they're married, oh, look, he cheated on his wife. I don't know. That's why for and a long what, time I didn't get married, you know. Yeah, well, and everybody has their definition of cheating. I mean, is, is it oral sex? Is that cheating? Um, well, it's I've always just had the, a theory about that one, you know. Which what? Women go, which, uh, oh, well, she, he, he, you know, she got head, he got head from her, blah, blah, blah. He's cheating on his wife. And I'm going... Okay, now let me ask you a question here. How many times have you had sex? Mm -hmm. I know people will, well, I don't know exactly. And I say, but do you count blowjobs as part of having sex? And they, most women will tell me no. Yeah, I think, I think that is So I said, if you sex. don't consider that sex, if the guy went out like Bill Clinton and got mm -hmm. head, mm -hmm. is he cheating? And they go, oh, absolutely he's cheating. But you just told me a minute ago that blowjobs weren't sex. Right. Well, that's how I, that's what I think played into his uh, syntax is that he said, I did not have sex with that woman. And, you know, he didn't say I didn't get blowjobs from that woman. He said, I did not have, have sex, sex with that woman. And, and most guys, I, I don't know, myself, I never considered a blowjob sex I, until I... I had penetration, achieved penetration. Yeah. Um, I, I, then I, I said think, I had sex last night with that woman. If a guy said to me, Jig, did you did you get have sex last night? No, she uh, just gave me uh, a head. You know. Well I you know, it, I never considered that the completion of sex. Yes. And plus then there's emotional infidelity, which is starting to pop up more and more. You know, people have uh work work wives and work husbands. And there's I think in everyone's mind, they're, they cross a line mm -hmm. when that line is crossed to intimacy, when a person you feel like is your intimacy, mm -hmm. when you stray from that, that's probably more alarming than if you got, you know, loaded at a Christmas well, party. I think, the, I think the ultimate cheating is if you fall in love with somebody else. Oh, okay? yeah. But if you're still in love with your wife, but you went out mm -hmm. and some woman offered to blow you, uh, I don't know that ex exactly, if it doesn't have any impact on your marriage, you know, it's uh -huh. not going to cause grief, suddenly you're going to go off with this other woman, then I, I, you know, I've had women come to me and go, I don't know, I'm thinking of leaving my husband because he went out and had sex with another woman, let's go all the way with it, and uh -huh. what should I do? I said, is everything else in your marriage good? He said, oh yeah, he's a great husband. You know, he comes home and he, blah, 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 blah. and I go, and you're going to give that up because he had sex with another woman, then you're ruining the marriage on pure ego. That's true, on pure vanity, because you don't want it talked about in that way. Like, right. can you believe it? He cheated and she still took him back. Yeah. But, yeah, I, I think that, yeah, infidelity, plus it's something decided on by the couple. It is not for me to decide what right. is infidelity. Right, right. Right, people. you know. Yeah. I mean, I, one of my marriages, my second marriage, uh, I pretty much. Uh, what, no, my was my third marriage. My third marriage. Wait, wait second, third. <laughs> oh no, my third you, marriage. My third marriage. It was kind of an yeah. understanding that we had, you know. It was what there was an um, understanding that we had. Yeah, right. Each other. And if you're both, uh, uh, you know, if you're adhering to the understanding. What's the problem? Here, here, here's what happened to me, okay? And I, I, I was a cheating motherfucker. I'll have to say that, okay? Yeah. yeah. You know, I, uh, my, my second wife, did I cheat on her? Yes. My third wife, yes. Uh, my first wife, not yet. I'll tell you what the difference was. <laughs> not I, yet. I got a job, finally, after years of working at it, in Houston, Texas. Big, big market. Yeah. In which yeah, I became, in which uh, I became a radio star, so to speak. Yeah, that's the lowest form of show business, by the way, folks. Is the being is on being a radio star, okay? But I, I became a radio star, and all of a sudden, women were throwing themselves at me. Now, for a guy who could barely get laid before mm -hmm. that, that's a big all deal. of a sudden I'm having this temptation just thrown at me. 
And because I had low self-esteem in that area, it suddenly mm -hmm. became a whole different thing. And I couldn't help myself. Yeah, it's almost like you're crazy if you don't take advantage of it. Yeah. If that's I, if that's been an area, like you say. It isn't even crazy. You, it's just that I was n never that kind of guy. I never had that uh, kind of appeal. And all of a sudden, I have women throwing themselves at me. Yeah. And, and, and I did not handle that well. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Meaning you were busy. You were a busy boy. I was a busy boy. Yeah, yeah. You know, and and consequently, that was the nature of my cheating. It happened as a result of the fact that I, um, you know, suddenly became popular, and mm -hmm. and women found me attractive. You mm -hmm. know, and yeah. I wasn't an I, I wasn't an ugly guy. You know, no. But I never. But you were yeah. A, a hot property, a bragging point. Someone could say, "I had sex with Alex Bennett." Yeah, and the yeah. other and the other girl says, "So did I." Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, <laughs> how was it for you? <laughs> yeah. So that was a hard thing for me to deal with, and when I finally, um, um, you know, broke up with Ronnie, who was the wife that yeah. I was cheating on when we went to Houston, Texas. And she was your producer, wasn't she? Well, later on in New York, yes, yeah, she became my producer. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so when that was over, I then met up with uh, Susan. And mm -hmm. Susan and I kind of had an understanding that, you know, yeah. I was kind of, I had a roving eye in that respect. <laughs> and we actually got married for all the wrong reasons. I was broke. And we didn't have any money. So we figured if we got married, we'd get all these presents of cash. Uh -huh. And that's why we got married. But instead, you just ended up with a bunch of Cuisinarts. The Cuisinarts. <laughs> no, we, we told everybody, please, no no d gifts like that. Just send money. Yeah, yeah. cash. And we made about 10 grand. They kept us going for a while, you know, in those days. Oh, wow. Well, now, when you get married later in life, like I did, you don't have that approach. You already got everything you need, yeah. and so if they had a wear, you know, wedding or a shower yeah. for you, what would you ask well, well, for? Your what marriage. You... Let me ask you about your marriage. Uh, not yeah. that I want to pry. Um, no, it's fine. But, but pry away. Uh, <laughs> uh, when you got married, of course, you got married later in life. You're how old? I'm sixty three. I got married when I was sixty one. But when you were sixty one, it's already yeah. a successful marriage. Anyway, <laughs> when you were 61, uh, did you get married? Did you get married in an official ceremony at some church or something? Did you have a big wedding? Or did you just go off and get married like Marjorie well, and I see, did? We talked about every game. He's been married, though, I can say this, four other times. Oh, so he beat me. He beat me. You're number yeah. five? Marjorie's yeah. only number four. And well, yeah, well, no, and it was, I can see in my own mind, I used that for an excuse for the whole time. We were together for about seven years. And I said, I am not good. Why would I marry someone with your track record? That is just insane. And yet something, you know, it made sense at this stage of well, our no, lives. But, but you say track record, and yet you also with him had a track record that this relationship had lasted at least, what, how many years before you got married? Yeah, I think we were together five years before yeah. we got married. So, so really, you know, I mean, kind of with Marjorie, when she said to me, she proposed to me. Yeah. It, it was on leap, it was on, it was on leap day, and traditionally on leap day, the women can ask the men to marry them. Yeah, yeah. oh, that's cool. So she proposed to me. Mm -hmm. And my response was very romantic probably the most romantic thing i've ever said in my life i looked at her, i looked at her and i went sure why not <laughs> <laughs> a glowing review I said, yeah you know we've been living together uh sure why not you know oh, what? yeah so we I'm were then en we, were, we were then engaged and she took some old ring of her mother's and put it on her finger and said here's the engagement ring i said good hey, i hey. don't have to spend money on one 
you know. Ricky gave me on my birthday, my 60th birthday, he gave me, and it was beautiful. It was a full moon. We were at this resort. It was during COVID, so we had this huge resort pretty much to ourselves, yeah. and we had a one. Day. I caught my first catfish ever at the age of 60. It was a wonderful day. And he wait, proposed wait a minute, to me. Hold on a second. Your first catfish at, uh, at eight, at how old? No, I caught my first catfish at the age of 60. And I was so excited. Well, he, let me tell you this. As someone who knows. Yes. I've never caught a catfish. Oh, well, I caught two that day. So you can, uh, you know, you can uh, like... Right oh. on my coattails, my catfish tails. Oh, okay. I'll have to go out catfish hunting sometime. <laughs> but it's so fun because you can catch them easily. I've catfished a few women, but... <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it was just a wonderful day. He could not have ordered a more beautiful... Well, we'd had a great day. It was a beautiful evening when he asked me. And he didn't want to go out and buy, a, you know, a $20,000 engagement ring, if I might say no. And... So he gave me, he'd taken a Super Bowl ring, one of those promotional Super Bowl rings they give out the, yeah. the Super Bowl at gas stations. And he gave me that and he doctored up to say, will you marry me? Oh, that's I think it cute. Was that's that's adorable. Yeah, it was pretty cute. And But my response was, I'll think about it. <laughs> really? Yeah. Cause I, hey, have I you just, ever had to answer that question before in your life? Oh yeah, you have. Yeah. People have asked you to marry them. Yeah, and uh, at once I said yes, and I was so panicked, I gave the ring back after a week. I called him in another city and said, "You got to come here. This I don't feel right about this." And so, yeah, did he come you up? Broke several his times. heart. No, well, I'm married to him now. So oh, well, this is the same guy. Yeah. Oh, okay. It can't, All right. Yeah. Okay. But the. the the other ones, I mean, there was always something. The first one, I could have married. He was ideal. He was just the golden boy. And I should have married. I could have married him. Mm -hmm. But uh, I just thought, no, there's too much living for me to do. And I don't want to be, you know, this uh, basically just, I don't want to be a wife at the age of 23. And I want to see what I can do on my own. Mm -hmm. And so that's what that's what put that one out of the picture. Yeah. But he would have been a great husband, you know, a fabulous husband. But I wanted to prove myself, my reasons for turning down marriage proposals. I wanted to prove I could make it in the world by myself. Well, and you certainly you certainly waited a long time to get married. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And I always wanted to do it right. I thought, can I do this right? You know, with all the like, patience and um you know kindness and all those things that are going to be required of you on a daily basis all day 24 7 that's what's required in a marriage and i wanted to make sure i had the confidence that i could be that person yeah and, and i think that was probably as important in my saying yes this time as anything i had confidence that i could be a good person in a marriage yeah well apparently you know if you look at it, you had seven years, and now you've been married, what, three? Uh-huh. So you're or really in the tenth year of this relationship. That's probably one of the longest relationships you've ever had. Y yeah, it's right up there. It is right I up mean, there. I mean, uh, 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 Marjorie and I figure we're we're celebrating this year our, our 12th wedding anniversary. Okay. Uh, what is, what is but, the anniversary? But if you add the time we were together, we're going on to like 20 or longer than that you know yeah yeah well and like they have that chart about what you give for each anniversary like first anniversary's paper is what the 12th anniversary like a snow globe of, of uh, elizabeth taylor and richard burton yeah, my, our <laughs> wedding anniversary this year i think is crumpled aluminum wrap i think <laughs> that's right <laughs> which you know if you get bored you can always play basketball with it just yeah <laughs> entertain yourself with like little diversions well, rather than well, art. When I heard you got married, I went, that's amazing, you know, because nope. I, I I knew you as somebody who just never was getting married. Yeah, and I didn't think I would. Yeah. It just, I thought, why? I'm kind of, ha I'm pretty happy now. I like my alone time. I'm really a consummate loner. I mean, I I like being around people. I have that gregarious, you know, side. Yeah. But 
I'm a loner. Yeah, I, I can imagine. <laughs> I always knew you as that. But, mm -hmm. you know, if, if you have a marriage and you give each other space, that's great. You know, we have this big apartment, so if I don't want to have anything to do with Marjorie, I just go in the guest room and watch television. You yeah, know. see, that's exactly what I do. We bought a two-story house so we can be separated by a floor, you know, if nothing yeah, well, else. Marjorie and I, Marjorie and I didn't uh, during COVID. You know, it was this was a perfect apartment for COVID because we stayed here months at a time without going out practically, you know. Yeah, we yeah. We ordered everything and then sprayed it as it came, you know. <laughs> hey, listen, we've run out of time here. Oh, well... Well, let's let's do this again. I think we will, ladies and okay. gentlemen. That's our old friend and working companion at one time, Laurie yeah. Thompson. Goodbye, Laurie. Hi, babe. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Well, hello, everybody. How are you? <clears throat> Boy, what am I? I got horse tonight. Is this it? <coughs> hmm. Hmm. You know, part of the problem, getting older, uh, phlegm, <laughs> phlegm, anyway, how are you, how you doing, what's happened, you all uh, happy and uh, well fed and life is good and you're doing okay, fine, glad to hear that. Uh, let me see here. Um, well, well, let's just bring in our what people are here already. Uh, I'm sure more will show up, but uh, I hope so. You know, there's uh, okay. And uh, let me see, Jeff Stein. We admit him. Uh, okay. Well, that's a beginning. Uh, hello there to Alan. Hello, Alan. How are you? Um. Well, I thought I had a cold Friday. Tested negative Friday and Saturday, and last night tested positive, so I'm part of the club. What, for COVID? Yeah. You never had it before? No. Wow. Well, you know, I'm beginning to wonder if you necessarily, did, did you take a second test? Yeah. To make yeah. sure? Yeah. Yeah, I actually took a picture of both of them, and I didn't know what they were going to want. So how have, you, then, how have you been feeling? What do you feel? Like a cold. Uh, no, no fever, no chills, uh, you know, just like a cold. Well, I don't know that that's necessarily the COVID symptoms. Oh well, it, it, it's you know, COVID co stuff. It's it's considered mild COVID, co and COVID's it, very fluish. Yeah, yeah, well, this is not that, but that's why I was kind of surprised. I was, I was on the phone with a friend of mine last night who was an emergency room physician, and he says, you know, some of your symptoms might be COVID. And I said, I had tested myself a couple of times early on. He says. You know, do me a favor, test yourself again, and boom, there's the line. I'm like, oh, great. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, who knows? I mean, um, I, I, I hope you, you know, you may have it. Uh, you may not, you yeah, know, but be best to They, play, they wouldn't give me Paxlovid because two of the drugs I take interact with it. So you stop <laughs> taking them for five days. Uh, well, yeah, they're, they're, important. they're drugs I can't stop taking for five days. So. Wait a minute. Which ones were they? One's a blood pressure medicine. I can't think of the name of it. And mm -hmm. another one is uh, something else. I don't know. And there were a, there were a bunch of them that I would have had to stop too, which wouldn't have made much difference in my life. So well, no, with Paxlovid, all I have to stop is my um, uh, not blood pressure. The other one, cholesterol medicine. I have to stop. Yeah, I'd have to do that too. But you can. Do, <clears throat> can you? Anyhow, I I don't. I uh, feel. A little better today than I did yesterday, and yeah, yeah. it still feels like a cold. You know, watery eyes and sneezing, and, you know. Well, yeah, but you see that that doesn't sound like the symptoms of COVID to me. Yeah, it does. It's a, it's like a mild cold. I mean, like a cold. No, it's well, like R RSV. RSV is like that also. Yeah, except for the the test tested for COVID, and yeah. I reconfirmed. I went to the doctor today, and you know, looking for. Packs a little bit, and he says you don't qualify, but we can do a, a a quick test here with our testing. And he said, yeah, it's positive for COVID. Mm. Oh, said, okay. well, it is well it is. yeah, okay, you know. But yeah, you'll, you'll so be, now a new member of the club. You'll be okay. It's okay. not getting worse, is it? No. Oh, okay. Well, then you're mm. uh, you're okay. They're, they're offering me if I want to go get injections, three of them, three times in a row. 
and I haven't heard from the infusion clinic, Resdesivir. But my doctor said, you know, you're not getting worse. You got a very mild case of this. I'm not sure I'd add drugs to your system that, you know, are pretty heavy mm -hmm. duty oh. unless you start getting really sick. And I said, yeah. okay. Yeah. Well, wait a minute. I forgot to put everybody on here. Okay. Oh. There they are. Okay. I don't look at anything here anymore. I'm, I'm just screwed up some something. So other than that, I'm doing okay. Good. Well, I'm uh, just, uh, you know, I take plenty of, get plenty of rest uh, and uh, call me in the morning. Absolutely. Uh, you know. Uh, hello to uh, um, our, our good friend, Charlie. Uh, hey. Char Charles, how's it going? Oh, pretty good. At least I don't have COVID. Yeah. Now, are there any really intelligent people out there who can figure out what the uh, what the T-shirt says tonight? <laughs> uh, oh, root root minus one person. I don't know what that. Okay. Uh, oh, root, root of root one root minus one is I. Okay, oh. so try that again. Two cubed is eight. I ate some. Pie. Pie. Ah, I got pie. Is that a new hey, t-shirt or have you had that one for a while? Yes, I've, I've had this on before. Yeah. yeah, I think you've had it on before. I seem to remember I ate some pie. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. in your in your normal day-to-day -day life, would you ever use that? Would I use what? Those, those symbols? Yeah. I probably, uh, probably haven't. I've used the number two, of course, but I don't think I've ever used the square root sign since I left graduate school. <laughs> Same thing with uh, the the sum symbol, sigma. I think Charlie has a dream. Of, Charlie has a dream of him walking with one of those smart shirts and some gorgeous girl just walking up and reading it right off. Oh hey, my that's god! Already happened. That's all. Oh really? Happened. Oh yeah. <laughs> Well, doesn't that make you feel good? Oh, yeah, you should be meant to be. That should be marriage right away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, no. I mean, she was with her boyfriend, so but she was gorgeous. And then you could speak oh, some man. smart, some smart math to her, you know, yeah. and the guy would like just be like speak a different language. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 And uh, Jeff, how are you tonight? Good. Yeah. Good, uh... How's everything up there in the? Uh, connected to get the cut. That's kind of funny that where we live, there's hardly any snow at all. But if you go half up Connecticut, there's snow all over the place. Really? Oh, yeah. Interesting. We have, we haven't gotten any snow this year. We got some snow one day <sighs> this month, I think, and it, it you know it didn't stick. You know, well, I mean, we haven't, we haven't really seen, we really haven't seen snow in New York City in years. So, and I don't know what happened because when I first moved here, every winter you had at least two, three major snowstorms, mm -hmm. yeah. which it was, as the Jews say, up to your pupic, you know. Um, it was pretty, pretty, uh, pretty, uh, pretty uh, 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 heavy. But now, nothing, you know, so don't tell me we don't have climate change. You know, oh, yeah. I know people want to deny it and so on, but you can't deny it, you know, so. Well, I got a whole bunch of new doctors now. Do you have a whole bunch of new doctors? Yeah. What, do the old ones die on you or what? No, that's really what happened. Really? I had a lot of very good doctors at Yale. Mm-hmm. And... Um, they retired them or died or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I went to some of the new ones, and they were just kind of like not that fun. Oh, no, you don't want – I'll tell you something. The problem with doctors today – like I have one doctor who's my, my primary physician, been my primary physician for years. Uh, and um, – so I, uh, I've been going to him, and I've been getting a checkup about every year, every year and a half or so, mm -hmm. you know. Most of the time he calls me and says, come on down, it's time for your yearly, and I go down and do it. Well, all of a sudden, about, I don't know, three, four years ago, he went to a concierge system in which you pay him $2,000 a year and he'll actually talk to you. <laughs> You know, he'll do all the things that doctors used to do, but now for a price. And if you don't want to pay him, well, uh, you're on your own. 
you know, come see them when you want to, when you got a problem. So I had this thing happen. Let me get rid of that Lori Thompson. Man, everything I'm doing tonight is just, it's so bad that uh, um, I, I, I keep screwing up here. I got to get rid of Lori Thompson. Uh, uh, okay. No, don't get rid of Lori. No, I just wanted to get rid of the, the it said Lori Thompson there. And, oh, mm. boy. That's the same the story of my life, folks. Anyway, where was I? Oh, so um, I um, I haven't seen him in about a year and a half or something like that, you know. And he has a lot of mm -hmm. a lot of uh, uh, um, drugs that he prescribes to me. He's my main drug supplier. He's my main dealer. Okay, <laughs> and and um, so all of a sudden. I'm trying to get my stuff renewed, and it doesn't get renewed. It just sits there. This is out at uh, uh, Costco Pharmacy, in which I use. And I went, well, what's happening here? So I, um, I got a hold of Costco, and they said, your doctor just isn't replying. And I went, okay. So I call my doctor, and I say, you know, you haven't renewed my, my current prescriptions, and I really do need them. And I get a call from their office. Well, that's because you didn't have another doctor's appointment. They said, no, uh, nobody called me to tell me I had to have a doctor's appointment. You know, and, uh, and uh, uh, if you had, I would have made an appointment. Yes. But I didn't hear from you, and I guess I, for, you know, I don't sit around thinking, gee, when was the last time I went and saw the doctor? You know, and uh, she said, well, we can't give you more, any more drugs unless you come see him. I'm thinking to myself, what? You know, I have to, like, die? What, what, what are you looking at there, Kevin? Kevin? Yeah. What are you looking at? What were you? you were, oh, I was checking my mic. Oh, 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 you were checking the mic. Oh, okay. I'm trying to keep it out of sight. Anyway, so she says yeah. uh, we can't. Yeah, somebody yelled at him last week. Or we, we, can't prescribe <laughs> any, we can't prescribe any more drugs for you unless you come to see him. I said, okay, mm -hmm. I'll make, an, make me an appointment right now, and please renew this stuff. And I thought to myself, these are drugs that are, you know, I guess kind of life-saving for me. They're my cholesterol mm -hmm. drugs and my blood pressure drugs and so on. There are about six of them. And I went, geez, you know, what, are you, what the hell are you doing to me? Uh, and I it got me very mad, you know, that he just, they just cut me off rather than calling me up and saying, you know, we're going to prescribe one more time for you, but you got to come in. They didn't even do that, you know, and, and this is a doctor I've been with forever. So they're all getting shitty, you know, and, and, um, I went to my urologist yesterday. What was it? Monday, Monday, I went to my urologist and I like I love my urologist. He's really a terrific guy, and uh, we had our yearly and and whatever, and uh, I uh, talk with him about various things. And I just really like this guy, and he's always very good, you know. And he he makes an appointment a year in advance and things like that, you know. It's not like when I leave my other doctor's office, they say, okay, now let's make an appointment for you a year from now for another annual checkup. They don't do that. So, uh, you know, I mean, uh, if you find a good doctor, treat him like gold. And I didn't think I'd ever say that about a urologist, you know. Mm -hmm. And he said, how are you? And how's your health? And I said, I said how's, your, how's, how's your system working? You know, and I said, well, my penis has become a vestigial organ, you know. <laughs> and uh, I pulled that joke here, and I pulled that joke with him. And he mildly laughed. I thought it was a very funny joke, but, you know, in case nobody knows what vestigial is, look it up. Anyway. <laughs> hey, Brian. Yeah? What's up with you? Oh, I don't know. There's a lot of stuff up with me, but nothing I want to discuss on this show. <laughs> <laughs> nothing I can discuss right now. Uh, Adrian has another dance competition. This is her third week in a row. So, she's almighty. She's dancing up a storm. Yeah, and then she has a little bit of a break, so that's good. But uh, yeah. yeah, so it's it's fun. Well, I hope your problems are nothing terrible. Hmm. No, nothing terrible. 
nothing terrible. Just life gets adjusted every once in a while. So adjustments needed. So not anything at work. No, it works on good. Actually, they, we have a big storm, and um, it's oh, the atmospheric river is coming. Two of them are coming. The Pineapple so, Express. <laughs> that's yeah, what yeah that's what they said. <laughs> yeah, they, they pineapple Express. I don't now. I remember. Okay. So yeah, so um, I think Kevin is hitting it too, and Alan. So um, us So completely. they said Wednesday. <laughs> Wednesday afternoon is going to start here. It's going to be start windy and then uh, start raining. And usually I don't go to Lodi on Wednesdays, but I end up going up there today just to get some work done and come back knowing that I may not go tomorrow or Friday. So or maybe even next Monday, too. So, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, so the rains are coming. So it's good for us. Well, I won't press you on what's wrong, but uh, good. if you ever need to. It hasn't rained a bit down here. What? Yeah. Nothing. No, it hasn't rained down there. Really? It's nope. pouring up here right now. Yeah, because I know, like up in Eureka, the really heavy, heavy rains. That area always floods every year, anyway. So, yeah, yeah, it's missing us because of the mountains. Really? At least so far, anyway. Yeah, you know, I, you're, what's funny is I I made a big deal about people who show their mics on screen. And I have my pants on. No, no, no. He. And, <laughs> And I told Kevin, no, don't do worry I have to about show you. No, See, uh, is it? They're on. Yeah, well, we believe you. <laughs> anyway, he has his mic all the way up now, so he, we can't see it. And and he's got his wire though is for his earphones is coming down from it. So why don't you just Damn pull it, the mic? Now what? <laughs> not gonna make him. Why don't you? Is that better? Why, why don't you just pull the microphone? Is that better? Just pull the microphone down. Oh, you want me to pull my pants down? No, now? no, no. Pull the microphone Jesus. down. What do you want, Alex? God dang it. <laughs> you can pull the microphone down. There. That's a little bit. You look better. like uh, Wolfman Jack. Mm. Yeah. Um, I feel like him right now. Yeah. So. Uh, XDRZ, baby. Uh, a couple of things. Let's just talk sports. Oh, no. Yeah, okay, let's basketball. talk sports. Oh, basketball. Yeah, Warriors, Warriors had a great game last that. night. Warriors I had a great game last night. for the Chiefs because all you Taylor Swift haters been whining so much. I got to root for the Chiefs now. Well, I, I agree with those Me people. Too. You see, I agree with Taylor Swift that the TV people should stay off of her because she was looking at, at uh, the other day uh, on I, when I watched the one match, uh, the one football match I watched in my life uh she was there she was in it and they took a shot of her with a telephoto up in the booth right you know where she was and she then looked up at the tv screen and then she looked out at the camera and kind of shouted get that the fuck off of me or something that looked like those were the words she was saying she right. was not happy with it she i don't think she wants to be the center of attention at those well, games. she's getting all this hate tweets and stuff because of it. I mean, it's, it's Jesus Christ, let her enjoy the game. Oh, now the conspiracy is that she's going to get Trump not not uh, elected. Not elected? Yes, she's going to back Biden and it's going to cause the whole oh. fucking thing to go backwards. And do you Trump really is going to start you, a holy war is what they say. Do you really holy think that God. Taylor Swift could influence the election? No, I don't. But that, well, that's the big conspiracy in, going on right now. So she's they got to do something. Young people into registering to vote. That's the only way she might influence. Oh, good for her. Yeah, good for her. As we saw this picture, remember her and Biden hanging out together. <laughs> I can't see it. Ah, baby. He wishes. Boy, look at he that, wishes. Look at that g-string he's got. Look at that body. Yeah, no shit. <clears throat> AI is being used for bad. Yeah, this is exactly. proof. Yeah, exactly. Well, I, uh, uh, so far as I'm concerned, I mean, I'm not a big Taylor Swift fan. Okay, and quite don't frankly, say anything bad because Charlie is. <laughs> I know I'm Char a Swifty. I, I know Charlie is. <laughs> I guess he is. Yeah. I have her first album. Do you? I have about eight of her albums. Her first album was very good. Yeah. It was a country album, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah. yeah. My That's daughter awesome. and I used to listen to it all the time. Who knew that she had eight albums? 
I thought she was a one and done. She's got 17 person. albums. Give me a break. Oh, she's been gone for what? Almost almost two two centuries, right? Yeah. Two decades Has at least, right? she ever good, though? I mean, I, I don't like to read this. She was like 13 when she started. Huh? Did somebody naked just yeah. walk in back of you? He wasn't Allen? naked, but my roommate <laughs> went through his bedroom to the, you know, he's got his underwear on and he was nice enough to put a shirt on at least. <laughs> I'm sorry. He just, you know, he's he's got this too. He's got the COVID too. He actually started oh, out. We were at dinner Thursday night. He started out saying, "I think I'm getting a cold," and I thought, "Well, great. We're sitting across from each other. I'm going to get it." And the next day, I got it. And like I said, I he didn't test. I tested negative twice, and then waited a day, and then yesterday he tested <clears throat> positive. So, but he doesn't is, care that he's got COVID. I guess not. I don't know. I mean, he cares. But, but you can't be vicarious about it. You know, I'm glad you went he, to a doctor and he looked you over yeah, and said, okay. Right. He, he is uh, vaccinated and boosted and, like me, wears a mask everywhere. And you can still get it. <laughs> just a, this underwear and a mask. <laughs> yeah, I like I like my, my underwear masks. I mean, uh, there are three layers of tightly woven um underwear and they're mm. cotton and they're comfortable how do we go from the, how do we go from that from from taylor swift to underwear how do we i don't know how do we, how do we manage to make Dr. that uh, that leap in discussion fodder yeah brian brought it up so is it one of those converted jock straps brian oh <laughs> uh, yeah well, here's, here's, what, here's what it looks uses. like it's got know, holes in it huh that doesn't have holes. Those are black spots on it, so I know which side is the good side and which side. Oh, it's a, it's a bra yes. for Taylor Swift. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, I got to get one with her name on it and send it to Charlie. <laughs> hey, send Tony. Her some Taylor Swift to underwear. Concert, concert, so. yeah. What do you think of Taylor Swift, Tony? You know, you want to laugh. I'm a big football fan. I never really listened to her music, but now I kind of like her actually. <laughs> I mean, that like, wasn't, my, that niece, wasn't the my niece is making fun of me. She's like, "You like an hour today?" I said, "She's not bad. I mean, she's not the remote one side. So she know who they are." I said, "You know, because I don't even know if they sing so, anymore." So, so you're, you're you, you, she's okay because she's stooping one of your favorite base football players. I mean, I had Kelsey in fantasy football. He did nothing this year, Alex, the poor guy. Yeah. And I, can I say one thing, with Alex? What is that? A pajama party without the pajamas over there, or what? <laughs> I'm going to send pajamas for your uh, for your friend over there. He's walking around. And he's, I'm listening to my room and Alex says, that's somebody who walked by. I had to come down and call up. <laughs> What's going on? I said, holy shit. What's going on there? I said, I had to move the dogs. They're all over the bed. I said, I just keep I'm his issue from coming back up. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. All right. I'll <laughs> solve the problem. I'll close the door. Yeah. <laughs> it caught me off guard too. I was looking right at it and I heard the noise. And I go, oh no. The send feety pajamas out there. Footy pajamas. What do you put? Uh, I actually know, have those. Only men that wear pajamas are sissies in my book. So hey, hey, <laughs> hey, 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 oh. hey, 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 hey. I send you a pair, Alex, but you mean? Huh? And they oh. tend to be Taylor Swift fans. Well, these things. <laughs> oh, wait, no. I can't. I've never them. worn pajamas in my life. Neither have really? I. Wait a minute. Neither uh, have I. I have uh, always. This is probably TMI, but I've always slept naked. Naked. Really? Naked. Oh, no, you can find it. <laughs> Not sure. I can't do that, man. My thingy's bouncing all around at night, man. <laughs> no, always I used to sleep me. naked, okay? And as I've, got, I, you'll, as I've gotten older, I've started wearing uh, underpants and uh, T-shirt. And T-shirt. Because it gets cold. Yeah. You know. Well, you live in Texas. Come to New York. You're not going to sleep naked. I'm telling you well, that right snow now. Alex out there Especially when the when the landlord doesn't turn on the heat. Okay, well, you're good. you're Sorry. you're bundling <laughs> up. That's a New York thing. I've never heard that. Okay, how many guys here sleep naked besides Charlie? I never. The mother was in there. You do? My Jonies. Yeah. Why not? Why not be comfortable? That's My got. Man. That's got to be a pretty sight. Uh, uh, better who, than seeing me in a g-string like the picture that brian put up now who else who, 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 who else sleeps in the nude you don't sleep in the nude do you tony 
No, I got pajamas. Are you kidding me? You have pajamas? have pajamas? I mean, actual like yep. kitty pajamas. I actually have pajamas, yeah. I got like Comic five, strip. six pairs. The comic strip pajamas? Yeah, I got three pairs of those. They were on sale on Amazon. I got my Jim Henson's. I got a oh, Batman. Oh, jeez almighty. I got a lot of stuff. Give me oh, a... Yeah. Like, five, five, the five, five, in this house. <laughs> I come home, Alex, and I just flip my... I, I put them right on when I come back from the post office. I'm comfortable. I, 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 I went to the doctor the other day. I had pants on and i had a shirt on and i had a sweatshirt on and i had a, my big fluffy coat and whatever and as soon as i got home they all came yeah. off and on went the the little uh, that's what pants. i do too everything goes and right they, off to the thing yeah. i get my stuff yeah. okay and this, and this, i'll admit it sometimes i wear underwear to bed they really thank yeah, god I mean, I just, thank god because i was beginning to feel sad for your your, your, your linen <laughs> The competition out there. <laughs> it depends on how much this one's running around, you know. Yeah. I sent you a blanket. At least use that cover up. Did blanket. You... I sent you the Avengers blanket for your birthday. I didn't get anything, Tony. I got you that. Because Phil told me you got it. It's like a huge blanket. I threw him a fleece blanket. Oh come on! At least throw a tenant over there. All the bundle and wrap them up. <laughs> I got a I got an ashtray with a, a, a no you I said I left a five star review. But you but you know you were talking about like dent doctors and so on. Yeah, I was hearing you say and, that and so on and so forth. And I'm just finding what the problem is is that most people you get a hold of like when I write my lawyer he never writes back. I can ask him. You want him to reply back to Alex? Huh? Will he email you or you have to? I email him. And he never emails me back with like my wow. might ask him a question like what's happening with this thing are we pursuing it or not, and you know that's the kind of thing you can answer by just going yes and then mailing it. I thought he would he charge you for that, Alex if he answers you. You think? Oh sure. Oh, they would definitely charge you. That. Oh sure, sure. Well, that's uh, yes. I think was, I think yes is worth a hundred dollars if I if I'm not <laughs> mistaken. <laughs> But anyway, I can't yeah. get my I can't get my lawyer to answer me. And we got to hold him on the phone. We talked to him one day on the phone. We said, "Are you mad at us or something? Because you never return our emails." He says, "Well, unless it's really important, I don't answer them." And I'm go, "Okay, but no, I think you guys are great." And blah 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 blah. And then we get that all settled, and I, I write him a note, and he doesn't reply to it. <laughs> you know, it's just, you know, it just it just amazes me. You know, so. Anyway, so I I don't trust any of my I don't trust my doctor I don't trust my lawyers I only trust my urologist and that's only because he sticks his finger up my butt. Yeah, I heard you say that. He, he, did, he didn't even hours. do the he finger this time. This time he put a sonogram thing up there, and oh, just the tube? And, and looked around it. You know, looked at, you know made a, yeah. some pictures of it and then showed it to me in the office. You know? <laughs> yeah, I don't like him. And he said, there. "Oh, you've got a lot of shadows on your on your prostate." That was his immediate reaction. He said, "Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. but you you had those seeds, right?" I said, "Yeah." He said, oh, "That's <laughs> what they are." But anyway, is good too. Huh? My urologist is very good too. I have to say that he always he's on top of everything. You know what my so. PSA was again? Undetectable. Undetectable. Me too. I was so excited. That's a good thing. I mean, you have this. I'm it's following the thing on you, Tony. 30 years, uh, oh, so yeah. yours is undetectable too? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Boy, so nice. I guess I told him, does that mean I'm going to live? He says, yeah, don't worry about it. Go adopt another dog. I, yeah. it's all right. <laughs> Go you adopt know, another I, dog? That's what he told me because I knew I had two labs. I said, well, I'm actually watching one, another one. So I How many dogs one. do you have? I have Coco and Pebble, so two. And then cocoa and pebbles, asked, folks, because of the Flintstones. Go ahead, yeah, you, actually did go ahead, exactly you laugh moron. I told him that. He yeah. laugh. And then I actually, I'm, I'm actually one of my dogs is a client now, Kansas. I love Kansas. He's such a good boy. And when they went to Ireland, I had him for a I weekend. I love what he does. He's, he boy, dog walks or takes care yeah, of this dog when his people go away or something. Yeah. And you're saying so? This one dog who's my client. What? What? Yeah. You know, like but this is, this is no major fun, profession. You know he what I'm saying? The dogs yeah, are the only ones that to him. Oh, he's a cute dog. Kansas. Yeah. I mean, he's such a that's good. That's that brown dog. dog you sent me pictures. Yeah, that's Kansas. Yeah, Alex, this cute. dog waits for me like gold. They say he's attached to me. Yeah. Because I spoil him. Yeah, like when I leave in the well, yard. Well, somebody I'm, should I'm, be. Yeah, yeah, really you know what it is? When I leave in the yard, he has a little doggy dog that goes downstairs. He sits there. He doesn't want me to leave. So when I walk to the gate, he'll run there and wait. 
It's all right. I'll sit a few minutes. Not that I have anything really big to do at that time. Well, so not, you don't have that much to do with the rest of your life. So, you know. <laughs> exactly. so you know what I do? I sit in the yard. They got a big yard. It's all right, Kansas. So I sit there for 10 minutes, don't wind with him. And he goes in the back and gets, they have a fireplace. So they get these big sticks and they leave him out. He's chewing big sticks running around. I says, Kansas, what are you doing? And he sits there running around and I can't catch him. And he's running around with like sticks this big, breaking them apart. I told him, I says, Jane, you know, he's got sticks. Yeah, don't worry about it. So we let him chew them. I said, all right. And he's sitting there breaking his sticks. I thought, did oh, anybody man. send him Tony, coffee? Did you get him did anybody... pajamas too? I did have some coffee too. No, I didn't give him. I actually got him a. No, I did get him a dog toy. I call him a couple of toys. No pajamas for. for no, nah, had all the Kansas to wear him. He, went, well, he might, though. You never know. A little blanket for him. Whew. He's such a good boy. Well, you are yeah, so, but... Oh, he's so wired tonight. I know. I did have coffee. I was watching uh, some TV shows. Well, then shut the fuck up for a couple oh, of minutes. I I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Anyway, so, so, uh, uh, so anyway, getting back to Taylor Swift, uh, the the question really is, is that the the Swifties, of course, are happy about it and they're becoming big football fans, and the football fans hate it because they think she's a distraction. Well, he hasn't lost yet. Yeah, she was on. He the scored a touchdown the last sixteen seconds in in, in one game. Yeah. So how is that a distraction? Yeah. Well, everybody's sitting around waiting for it. <laughs> hey, well, listen. It's because, it's because they score a touchdown and they show yeah, That's the only time they show her. Football fans don't want to see her after the touchdown. They'd rather see a fan, like a real fan, you know, screaming up and down. And... Well, do you agree with that? As a football fan or former football fan after the 49ers didn't do very well? Oh, no, they're in the Super Bowl. Oh, Eagles. The Eagles. Super Bowl. Eagles didn't do that. Yeah. I don't know what team. You have no loyalty well, to the well, home so, team. So when the Eagles score, they show Bradley Cooper. <laughs> yeah, that's Bradley right. He's up for no yeah. his underwear. Yeah. Nobody yeah. complained about that. But she's True. made $312 million off of revenue, off of this whole Kelsey she, thingy. Not, she has the, the Chiefs have made that. Mm. Hey, well, listen, it's better than watching yeah, basketball where you have to see Spike Lee. So, you know, yeah. it's... Uh, the NFL's going to cash in big Jack time. Jack Nicholson, yeah. Yeah, the NFL's going to cash wait, 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 hold on a second. Yes, Ke uh, 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 Kevin, what were you saying? I said the NFL's going to cash in big time. They say it's going to be the most watched Super Bowl because of her. Ever, the, ever. The most watched live broadcast because of her. Because yep. she is in the audience... Because she's in the audience. There's a hundred million Swift fans that are going to watch the, the game that never would have watched it before. Exactly. hundred million and one. That's one you. <laughs> but I'll, two. I'll be there. That's two. Yeah, but if she doesn't go I'm to with the, you, Charlie. I'm with you, buddy. If suddenly they announce tomorrow she's not going to show up at the Super Bowl, uh, do you think that the ratings would go down? What happens when they break up? Oh, that's good. He's you just can't do it till after the I Super Bowl. Just think of all the great songs. Get right a song. Yeah. That's why the Probably goddamn. Happy. Oh, new album's cutting. They broke that's, up. That's why the damn tickets are eight thousand dollars a piece yeah. too. Has yeah, anybody? Right. Has anybody she's broken up with, written a song about her? I don't know, but she writes songs about them. I, I know, I know. But oh, any, I have know any of them written the a song about her? You know. I don't know her dating history, Charlie. I don't know. know. I've never heard of anybody writing a song about her. She writes a lot of songs about guys she's broken up. Who did she go with lately? I, I don't know off the top of my head. Who cares? Was John she's Mayer one of her boyfriends? I think so. Yeah. She didn't go with Charlie. That's all he cares about. She supposedly wrote yeah. nasty songs about John Mayer, if memory serves. Yeah, I think that's her. one guy that she once dated. Mm. Yeah. 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 Boy. I don't know. I don't know if that, I don't know if that's right. You know, it's not right to kiss and tell. Imagine if they wrote. A, imagine if you would have dated her in your prime. You would. You probably would have liked to write a song about you. That son of a bitch. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, on radio, all I could do was talk about them, but I don't. So you but know, that's true. Right? I only talk about my current girlfriend, and then I always gave her like a a, a phony name. Uh, yeah. oh, so so okay. she became a character rather than oh. a real person, so that uh, number one, I didn't make, get hell from them, 
but also it just it just made it easier. Like I, I you know, I called uh, one of my girlfriends Schmoody and another one Fish Princess and another one uh, I can't remember what I called the rest of them. Uh, but uh, it, you know, I mean, it, I came up with these names rather than their real name. But you wouldn't say if you had a fight like over the weekend, you would talk about it on the radio. Oh sure. You know? Oh, you would do that. I, oh, hey, I wonder what, if they would because, imagine. Because because I gotta tell you, you gotta fill up. Three hours, you know? Would she get mad at the girlfriend if she says, what the hell are you talking about that for? <laughs> well, I think they came to the conclusion that it was going to be talked about. Oh, so they didn't care? Okay. So, you know, uh, and I just had to watch out that I didn't say anything that would break up the relationship. Oh, wow. But sometimes there are funny stories about, you know, you be, yeah. there's some very funny stories when you're going with people. Mm. You know, I suddenly realized I don't do anything with my life. I sit here in the house. That's it, okay? I don't do anything. So I have nothing to talk about. Or I used to have a lot of stuff to talk about because I did a lot of different stuff. And I suddenly realized the other day when I went out for lunch with these two friends of mine, two friends of ours who just got married, uh, I came back. I had a couple of, st a couple of st good stories to tell on the air. Mm -hmm. Like the fact that, you know, the guy, I got in the car and the guy didn't wait for me to close the door. One of my feet was on the ground. And he takes off like I'm already in the car. And that foot of mine was moving like crazy. He's supposed to break his door handle to hang on to it. Yeah, well, I finally <laughs> I finally slowed down, but you know. But I wouldn't have that story to tell if it hadn't been, you know, that I went out. So I've got to go out more often. But I don't know the what, you know. <clears throat> Okay, so Taylor Swift. So Joe Jonas, you know, one of the Jonas Brothers, mm -hmm. some guy, some guy, another guy from Twilight Star, blah, blah. Didn't Joe, uh, jo didn't jo didn't Joe Jonas marry that uh, Indian woman? Maybe. Not Native American, Indian. Okay. Yeah, Jake Gyllenhaal. She dated <laughs> Jake Gyllenhaal. She dated <laughs> Connor Kennedy, who is uh, Robert Kennedy's grandson. Oh, she's in the Kennedy. Harry right? Styles, you know, the guy from One Direction. Harry Styles, oh, okay. yeah. Calvin Harris, who's a big DJ, DJ guy. Uh, this guy. Oh, I don't know who he sexually is. assaulted her, by the way. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Uh, some other weird guys, I don't know. I'll try and Travis Kelsey now. And Travis Kelsey. He has, he he has some other people, but I'm too old to know who these people are. Or as David Letterman calls him, Kelsey Grammer. He sounds yeah. very promiscuous. I'm surprised you haven't gotten in line, Charlie. <laughs> I don't think she's that promiscuous, do you no, think? You uh, Brian think named about 20 people and, and you don't know she now. sleeps with any of them because they don't stick That's around true. very long, you know? I'm sure Charlie would. <laughs> well... You know, and Tony, Charlie, Although she'd probably never come out of her room. She saw Tony in the house. <laughs> Charlie's basically a 19 year old girl, anyway. All right, so <laughs> yep, I've been accused of that. Of course, is she popular still with the young kids, or is she now an older act? Well, my niece is 21 and she likes us still. Yeah, she's but she's comes. 21, she's not a teenager. That's true, yeah. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I mean, are 15 year olds, do they like Taylor Swift or is it, are they under somebody olds, else? No problem. What? Yeah. 11 yeah, year olds. Adrian likes her. Year olds, eight year olds. Yep. Oh, really? Adrian likes her? Yeah. Oh, okay. And she did this. They were teenagers. Yeah. Marvel star Todd Hindenson. Hindenson? Never heard of it. Hiddleston? Yeah. Oh, you mean, you mean. Uh, what who he, what's the part he plays? Marvel on? star, oh, the Loki guy, Middle Loki. Loki. Yeah, he was, he I also like did, he also did a great thing Marvel. called uh, the Night Manager. Oh uh, really? Uh, is, uh, for, which was a, a six part series with you, Laurie, oh, as the cool. bad guy, and it was like this whole spy thing. It was just like, wonderful. And Marjorie like fell in him. love with Hiddleston. You know, yeah, he's good. Yeah, but mm -hmm. I I don't like him as Loki because he doesn't look the same way in Loki. You like him in House MD? House MD? No. That was you, Laurie. Right. We're yeah, talking about Hiddleston, maybe. the guy who played with you, Laurie, oh. a oh, night oh, manager. Sorry. Boy. I'm sick. You know, you, Laurie, plays a good bad he guy. He plays a really good bad guy. If you ever get a chance, watch, watch the night manager. Night manager? I'll check it out. Yeah. 
So anyway, that now there was another thing going on today that kind of really, I sat there yelling at my TV set, okay, when I saw it on the news. It seems as though the uh, Congress today decided to get all the big uh, social media guys together and put mm. them in front of a committee who then assailed them for um, uh, uh, hurting children. I guess that's the best Josh way. Josh was children. right up front, too. What? Killing. Killing children, well, that too. And I'm going, I'm watching this, and I'm going, you know, these politicians are such whores. Yeah. You know, and yeah. they it's a subject they know nothing about. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and the bottom line on it is, I don't blame Facebook because your kid committed suicide. Exactly. Blame yourself as a parent for not paying attention to what he was doing. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know? And don't yeah, come before a committee with your sad sob stories because you feel guilty because you didn't do anything about it. Josh right. Hawley was right up front berating the guy and telling him to dig into his wallet. Who? Uh, uh, Josh Hawley. But who was he asking him to dig into his wallet? He was going after Zuckerberg like a freaking snake. Well, why Zuckerberg? I'm sure would do anything he can to make the, uh, this thing. Well, at least he had the balls to turn around and stand up and give a public apology to him. Yeah, to their face. Well, that was very nice. But I'm. But what yeah, I'm I saying. Know, but I mean, it doesn't do much. But I mean, at least he did it. And then Holly turns around and goes, "Well, you're gonna dig into your wallet and take a billion dollars." Yeah, well, Holly's an a, asshole. You know, he's such a prick. I swear to God. Yeah. I hope he loses. Yeah, but I mean, uh, it was, uh, you know, I mean... Grandstanding like no tomorrow. Well, the fact is that technology always gets blamed for something. When it isn't the technology that's to be blamed, it's the no. people <clears throat> utilizing the technology. And I don't think that uh, Zuckerberg, as much as I don't like the guy, it created something because, oh, I want kids to suddenly start killing themselves, you right. know. I mean, I'm sure he's as, as, as bothered by it as anybody else. But what can they possibly do to stop this sort of thing? They can't monitor everything that goes across their system. It's impossible. How many, how many billions of, of pages do they have with people posting stuff, and they're supposed to sit there and police every inch of it? I'm sorry. You can't do that. So don't blame the technology Blame the people who misuse the technology or misinterpret the technology. I don't know how many times I sat down with my daughter and went through her Instagram and told her, read me your friends. Nope. Nope. Yeah, okay. Nope. 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 Delete, 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 delete. I don't know how many times I did it. <laughs> well, oh, but she... Dad, nope. 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 Did, did she get me? She... Did... Limited amounts hmm. of friends that I didn't know. And she said, well, I know that. No, yeah, I don't know him. Nope. Delete, 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 delete. <laughs> and she went through that. I went through it several times with her. Yeah, and the, you got to do it. And did she wind up appreciating you for it? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's my job. <laughs> see, exactly. see, that's it. That's your job. That's my job. Yeah. Did you she find probably that? probably does now. But did you find that any of the social media affected her? Yes. What? How, in what way? It affects them. It affects them in all kinds of ways. I mean, yeah. they want likes. It's the way that they are nowadays. They're, kids are affected by social media. They, they do get affected by it. And but it's the way they are these days. It's, it's when we were friends, we got affected by our friends face to face. Today, kids get affected by social media. It's the same way, but different. They're affected electronically. We're, we were affected personally. And uh, it happens. It does. And it takes someone to interfere and, and monitor that situation to, to you know, mm -hmm. get involved to make sure it doesn't go so, out, of, out of whack. So you as a parent, though, you, you, made, you paid attention to what she was doing on the Absolutely. Internet. Absolutely. How about, time, how, you know, there was, I'm sure there was ways that I wasn't aware. Yeah. I mean, I know that she got a hold of some accounts sometimes and started her own accounts, and I'd catch her. But there was, I'm sure, times that I didn't. Yeah. 
and there was times when she was bummed out about something that was on social media and I had to go in there and you know you go in and you talk and you say you got to back off that crap and blah 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 but it all comes back I mean it, it's it's monitoring and keeping an eye on stuff well I'm having a problem with Marjorie um, uh, in that she watches too much of this MSNBC crap and she also has on her on her phone, this thing called Citizen that tells you every bit of crime that's happening. Yeah, my sister has that. Yeah, anyway. but, no, but I'm going to say it again. Uh, uh, Alan, Alan, go ahead. Uh, if that's your name still. Uh, Alan, uh, because okay. the reason I'm saying it is this is the truth. I mean, she just is so bothered by the world because of what she sees on MSNBC. And I try mm -hmm. to tell her, you got to stop watching this crap. If, Be and, it, and if you look at yourself, you find yourself doing the same thing. If you really sit back and look at yourself and go, you know, about the things that, you know, I mean, we talked about this a little bit, you know, Saturday about, I was telling you about the, the shit that I was seeing while I was doing my work. Mm -hmm. But if you look at yourself honestly mm -hmm. and look at social media and sit there and go, I mean, sometimes I get pissed when I'm looking at social media and see people off on a vacation and shit like that. And I go, oh, what the how come they can do that shit? And I got to sit back and go, you know what? Who cares? Good for them. They can do it. Yeah. If I don't, you yeah, know, Brian, but, but the thing back is, away from the thing it. is what I told Marjorie was you watch this news and you get so involved in it. And yet you got to remember that the basic principle in television news for years mm -hmm. has been one phrase. If it bleeds, it leads. Yeah. You know, the, the, you're never going to find stuff there that is going to tell you how wonderful some things are in the world because that's not what they're reporting. Mm. You know, oh, yeah, at the end of the show, they, they get kind of like, oh, they get like Zuckerberg, you know, did today. They do, oh, hey, we're going to give you a happy piece of news here at the end. Yeah, there's of the a kitty stuck today. in a tree or whatever. Yeah, 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 right, right. Or here's somebody to help somebody or whatever. But that doesn't make up for all the misery they just heap upon you. Yeah. And then the way in which they report it, I mean, they get somebody who whose kid has just been murdered or something, and they sit the camera right in their face until they cry, and then they cry their eyes out, and then they say, and that's it from here, Bob. You know, yeah. and they don't think to say, stop that camera from rolling. We don't want to put that person's misery on screen. And and uh, that's what bothers me about it. I don't watch the news anymore. I'm sorry. I got nothing to talk about here because I just the news just doesn't interest me in the way in which they're reporting it. Although I'm waiting for Trump to get hit with another something or another, but you know, <laughs> I mean, you know. Yeah, you just have to you have to you have to keep your mind open and and start rejecting things and and saying you know, okay. Yeah, that's the way it is. That's what they're doing. And then turn your head and you have to keep your mind open. Well, today Marjorie's looking at her, at her, at her keep phone. Keep an eye on your kids. Looking at citizens, right? And she says, do you know there are three known rapists in our neighborhood? Oh, don't even tell her to go on like next door and then look up yeah. the, the, the molesters and all that oh, stuff. Oh, really? If, next door oh, it's geez. called? Well, that's one of them. But I mean, you can, I mean, my Equifax, my credit reporting yeah i can go on there and see who is a molester down the street on equifax yeah really they got, a, they got a i think it's equifax yeah they've got they got a um uh what do you call it like a you know you can look up the uh, child molesters i think it's in that one but i know that one that you're talking about the um what did you say the one that reports the crimes citizens. yeah, yeah uh, citizens yeah. yeah you could probably find it in there too yeah, no, it tells you every crime that's been happening in the no, last... No, but you could probably look up the, the, the all the molesters that live in your neighborhood, too. Oh, yeah, I know. I'm I, sure you could. Well, that's exactly what she was reporting to me. She said, yeah. we, we have so many molesters in our neighborhood. Right, right. Three yeah, new within a one, mile or... Three within... new ones just moved in or something <laughs> okay. like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, I mean, you can find all the bad stuff you want. It's just yeah, well, I mean, but, looking for but, it, but a lot it, of it comes. To it's you. a very distorted world if you watch the news now, you know. Uh, yeah. it, it 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 doesn't show you, uh, you know. I mean, and also, you know, there's news happening all around the world that's important, and yet they don't report that. Yeah. You know, 
So I mean, it's just I. I, I so uh, the, the thing is, the thing is, like Kevin's saying, <clears throat> it's the parenting. It doesn't matter if you give your kid an iPad and you walk away. But there are so many there are so many things that you can go back to the iPad and see exactly where they've been. On Xfinity, I can see I can accumulate time, get, uh, allocate time for her, and I can see that she's been on certain certain platforms. Yep. So there's all the technology to be able to monitor them, but they don't. They just give the kids the stuff and they walk away from it, and that's when the kids start veering. And yep. if they don't check up on them, like go through their iPad, look at the pictures or any of that stuff, how are they going to learn? There, there was something on Adrian's one time, and it wasn't naked stuff, but it was like stuff. So. It's like, why did you save these pictures? You know, those type of things. But that was a learning thing. And then she understands and you know, she knows she learns from that. But, but, but parents but, just walk away and they don't they don't monitor anything. And there's so much technology to monitor everything your kid and does. And they're the first ones to scream and yell about Whoa, yeah, it was yeah. funny. And they're, well, they're they, the first they'll, ones they'll, to make all the noise. They'll yell and scream about Well, they about can it. get at this and they can get at that. Well, you know what? You can get at it too. Yeah. If you know, you're Brian, smart. Brian, she'd probably ask you, what's this app you use all the time called Pornhub? <laughs> you tell her, don't worry, don't worry about it. Well, that, I mean, I, I, I used to do the same thing. It's a weather thing. Let me ask you, you Brian. Because she it, used to be at... Mm, go ahead. Oh, no, no, go ahead. Continue. No, I was just saying that I used to go to bed at night, and she would be on, on the web. And like what Brian was saying, I had this app that I could tell what... I could go on to her and see mm -hmm. what, what website she was on. Yeah, and yep. I saw she was on the wrong website. Boom! Off went the web. Parental Turned it right controls. off. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I could turn it right off. No, since you hear the yell, he just shut off. My, you just shut off the fucking internet. Yeah. yeah. See, Adrian's internet's supposed to be off in ten minutes because it's her bedtime. If I turn it off now, she'll come in here. Yeah. What, what, what do you mean? Screen, what do you mean? Right? Wait a minute. What do you mean her internet? No, her internet because Xfinity has no. allocated per yeah. person and all the devices you you link. Well, so you can turn you can turn off her device. Yes. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. But but Connection you know what point. would happen well, you if you TV, did, if your kid comes to you and says, all the other kids in school have an iPhone or an iPad or whatever, and I want one, are you going to turn them down? Yes, she wants a she wants a watch and a phone now, and she I gave her an iPad before, and she has a new iPad last year. End of last year, 2022, and that's all she's getting for a long time. But some of her friends have watches. The only thing I like about the watch is that I know where she is. Yeah, you can track her. Well, no, you can know where she is. Well, you could know where she is. With the phone, you can with the phone. You can. I, I, you can tell where she is. But I told her no because I no. She just wants it for games to play games and stuff, and I said no. Well, it's just for playing games. But if if you want to have some kind of communication with her. So that you can call her and say, "Hey, get home. It's time for dinner." I remind her, I has sit, I sat at school for like three hours until my mom remembered she was supposed to pick me up one time. Does she go onto Facebook? No, no. What does she do? I remember, she does her hoochie pole dances on uh, TikTok. <laughs> she does her. Yeah, Facebook is for old people. Yeah, yeah. The kids don't do Facebook anymore. They do Instagram TikTok. and Snapchat and TikTok. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know what I hate about TikTok? It has ruined the world for people who don't like portrait mode. <laughs> oh, you know, I, I honestly believe that you should be shooting, everybody should be shooting in landscape because that's nope. the way we see. Ain't happening. But well, that looks like you're looking through a slit in a phone, uh, in a fence. <laughs> I get yelled you know? at all the time because I do that. I go, I, go, I go horizontal and they go, turn it the other way. Turn it. No. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna go horizontal. Yeah, I'm gonna put this like we all look at things, you know. So everything is picture. blurry on the sides. <laughs> yeah. But what? Then, another thing, like like Kevin is saying, you know, they they I think 60 Minutes or one of those shows did a whole thing on on the whole internet with kids, and they really show that the boys don't give a shit, but the the girls are very sensitive when they post stuff and then the right. reactions from their kids from school and all that stuff, and they can be bullied. So I've always talked to Stephanie and asked her, you know, how is the internet going? How's this? How's this? You yeah. know, to see how she's, do you ever get bullied? Do people do that? She said, oh, some kids at school do and stuff like that. But, you know, you don't want to just say, well, I worry about my kid. But, you know, I just want to make sure she's okay. Yeah. yeah you got to, you got to, uh, you got to keep an eye on them. Yeah. 
you got to so, watch I mean, out for whether their mood changes or when they're, and you can see that they're down. You got to talk to them and find out what's going on. Now, the question is, should Facebook feel guilty for the way people are misusing their platform? <laughs> do the gun, do the gun manufacturers feel guilty? No. Gun manufacturers is a different story. You know, here you you uh, to begin with, uh, everybody has Facebook. Not everybody has a gun. You know, that's for starters. They they want them everybody to have a gun. They would like to, yeah. But I mean, it, it, it's just amazing to me that we're blaming we're blaming the technology, and we're not blaming the people using the technology. Yeah, and that's, that's I mean. and you're responsible parents. Keep an eye on your kids. You know, the minute you give them an iPad, you got to keep on the on the case. You know, you got to know what's going on. You don't just give it to them and say here and then not pay attention to them. On like the a other hand, portable TV. I mean, they they can do what they want with it in the other room, and you got to keep an eye on them. Yeah, but my my point is that that you know who knows what uh, uh, what you're going to do with the with that. I mean, it it's a matter of. Uh, you've got a technology, people are going to use it, they can use it for good, they can use it for bad, but the fact that that technology was created doesn't mean that that technology uh, is in and of itself ugly and horrible, you know? Right. Do you, would you agree with me on that, Charlie? Yeah. You know? I'm all, I'm I'm, all for technology. And what we always do is what they did today, is they use as their excuse why they don't want it the kids they always use the kids uh, they say yeah. oh well we can't have porn around because what if some kids see it and i go hey i don't give a damn i want to watch it but they could they could use the same argument for a an ipad and change it to a gun yeah Mostly exact it. same argument they don't yeah. give a shit that 30 g teenagers got shot at, at, at yeah. Parkland High School or whatever. How know? many of those parents who were complaining about, uh, 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 what do you call it, yeah, Zuckerberg yeah. and his little company, yeah. uh, would at the same time think it was okay to give their kid a gun? Right, exactly, my point. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yes, uh, uh, um, uh, Tony. You know, I was thinking about it in a different light too. It's almost like, it's really a truly double standard because think about it like this. I don't mind with pot being legal because I don't do drugs. But think about it. when I was a kid, remember? I never thought they would legalize gambling. I don't remember drugs. when you were a kid, but go ahead. Anyway. Well, you know what I'm saying? It's almost like them. You know what the problem is? I think because the government is making money on the gambling and the drugs. Whereas Facebook, they're probably not getting enough of a cut of the slice, really, for them. Well, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I, if they yeah. were making money off of it, I, I just, they'd, probably, uh, yeah. they'd like them a little more. I, I just think that these these people who sit there and, and look down from their podium at these mm -hmm. uh, people from these companies should really uh, quit being so uh, high-minded high about it. You know? Yeah, and one quick more point, because I know you got to get off, but with those guys, with those Republicans and everybody else sitting on the, on the podium there on the dais, say the same thing if it was a gun argument yes if they come out and say you pull out three million dollars to the nra and or 60 billion dollars and start a fund yeah would they say that hell no there yeah. wouldn't even be a discussion of that the same <laughs> people yeah. that are up there and on the dais right now wouldn't do the same argument i really would have appreciated zuckerberg today if instead of turning around to those people and apologizing which was nice of him to do if he just looked at the committee and said, you can all go fuck yourselves. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'd be like. You know, have to be nice, you're only, yeah, you're only doing what you're doing because you want to get votes next time, and you're making a big deal out of this. You know, but anyway, it's, it, it, it's, uh, it's an amazing situation. And it always gets me mad, okay? But then again, I'm an old fart, so I get mad a lot. Thank you, Alan. Appreciate it. Very nice of you uh, to be with us tonight. We're going to all get into bed tonight, close our eyes, and go to sleep thinking of you lying there naked. Um, I heard that. I had to come down. <laughs> Charlie. It's not going to want to bed any of this. Charlie, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Jeff, always a pleasure. Um, uh, Brian, uh, give my best to Adrian and, and your Frau as well. Tiffany, is it? 
Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean. Life to be. Huh? I don't know who names their kid Tiffany, but I certainly wouldn't. Don't start those rumors. (laughs) (laughs) Alan. Sorry, bro. I'm saying it. You're not saying it. No, (laughs) future wife. Huh? He said future wife. Right. Oh, did I say future wife? Oh, did I say wife? (laughs) No, Alan did. Oh, Alan did. Oh, Alan did. Oh, okay. Uh, Future wife. Yes. And uh, thank you very much to our good friend, uh, uh, (laughs) Kevin. Uh, And uh, finally, to Tony. Thank you for being here tonight, Tony. Everybody give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. Okay? There they go, folks. There goes our citizen panel for tonight. There'll be another one up next with uh, Amy Manuel on the intersection. She'll be taking your calls on Skype at GabNet Live. I'll see you again tomorrow. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Good night, everybody. Bye.